again, not realizing it would have been better to have crossed over to home where <laughs> all the answers are just beautifully available and can be understood. Um, so she, she stayed and the main reason why she stayed um, and the confusion um, was compounded by she had been uh, brought over to England on one of the Mayflower ships in 1623 and on her, her name, namesake ship, which was the, the Anne of London. And she just had this really complex, interesting relationship with the sea captain that brought her over. and. He was the man that she was waiting for and she thought she was meant to be together with that lifetime. So she was waiting for him to come back because he had not come back and she hadn't gotten closure when their relationship had ended. Um, When she was in her late teens, he had just simply disappeared and had said, I'll be back for you. So since he hadn't come back while she was alive, she thought, okay, I'm I'm dead now. I, I know I'm dead. I know I've left my body. I must, this must be the time when I'm supposed to reunite with him and we're supposed to cross over together. So um, confusion on multiple, multiple levels and also some pretty epic stubbornness, um, as I said, because guides and angels certainly came and encouraged her to cross over and she just would not go and um, was just insisting on waiting for um, that sea captain for um, Captain William Pierce to to come Um, and (laughs) when he did not present um, she did not leave. Mm -hmm. Wendy we do have a couple of people in the chat room and one of them is Becky Boutico who assures us she is going to be calling into the show later. But right now she's got a question for you. And this question is from the chat room. It's from Becky. Does Wendy feel there can be a ghost that became a ghost not of their own choosing? Now that's a good question. Oh, that is a powerful question. Um, Personally, no. I, I believe in free will and I do not believe someone can be forced to become a ghost or to be kept from going home. I believe they can make a choice to wait for others. Um, both Becky and I have had multiple experiences with, with that, but I don't believe someone can force someone to be a ghost and to remain earthbound. Wendy, we now have a caller. Uh, Hello, caller. Hello. Do you have a comment or a question? Am I the caller? You (laughs) are the caller. Hi, my name is Martha, and I just wanted to say I read your book, and I really enjoyed it. Well, that's wonderful, Martha. It's great to hear your voice. Thank you for taking the time. I, I'm a bit of a history buff, and I had some interest in the Plymouth Plantation and that whole settlement and the history there, and had some, some family members who were descendants of the Mayflower. And um, I, my own experience with ghosts has been mostly with my late husband and have had a lot of... Um, I guess visits <laughs> from him, so I certainly am a believer in it. Yes, yes. Well, that's that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so you were able to do some genealogy and and know that you have those those ties back to coming over um, on on the Mayflower ship. Yes, I to the point that I I sometimes wonder how much of my. Um, reincarnation takes place by way of my DNA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I've, had a lot, yes, I've had a lot of dreams that seem to recur in different time periods, but it's the same story. And then sometimes yes. it happens in the current time. Yeah. So anyway, it, 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 a lot of folks who have had other experiences with reincarnation or past lives, 
it rings true just from my own experience, even though it's different for me in that way. Yes, well, that's interesting. Um, do you do you see a difference between? Because I I can relate to being able to connect with a loved one that's passed on, and I'm, I'm I'm sorry for the loss of your husband. But do you do you see a difference between someone who's who's been able to go to the light and is able to visit us as a spirit, you know, meaning that they, as as um, our friend, our mutual friend Donya Wiccan puts it, well, they've mm-hmm. they've gone they've gone home, they've they've reported into headquarters, as she puts it, <laughs> and you know they're 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 able to come and visit loved ones in that higher, higher vibration spirit, you know, and right. I, that, I feel, I have felt like that was more my experience with, with my late husband. And I've talked to others who have had a similar experience where you get messages about that they are experiencing that they're at peace and Good. there's a very vibration, high vibrational energy coming from them. And it Good. Kind of, you feel these waves of peace come over you when they're, you know, when that presence is there. I agree, because so, um, that, yeah, that for me is how you can how you can tell that it's a spirit that's that's gone home and checked in at headquarters, uh, right. because you feel that peace and that love, and you feel them wanting to just share that with you and like. Right. To, I'm to at peace. I want everyone to be at peace. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Whereas when a when a when a ghost presents, when it's someone that that I'm helping walk home, I feel I feel sadness. It's like I feel big mm-hmm. emotions. It's like I might feel like crying, you know. And it, I know yes. it's not my energy, and it's just mm-hmm. you know this. Or you can feel anger or or whatever, mm-hmm. like these real unbalanced right. kind of like ego ego driven type emotions so well good well thanks for helping me um spell that yes. spell that out yes that's all rings true with me too thank you very much you know wendy i think martha also touched upon something a moment ago and that is the the correlation between spirit and dna uh, what is your take on that wendy i know rupert sheldrake has a some research going into that area and some theories and what correlation have you found between spirit and and DNA? I think there can be a lot of um, crossover. It's we live in such exciting times because we're at one of those places where you know everything that's old is new again, and it I feel like science and spirituality are at this point where they're coming back together again. You know, they'll probably inevitably go apart again. It's just, it's just kind of like the nature of, of life is there's cycles, um, but ebb and flow. But I do, I do definitely think that there's, there's tie-ins with, with um, our DNA. I believe we can heal our DNA at a cellular level. And when we heal who we are now, I believe we're positively impacting things, not only for ourselves, but for our loved ones, and not only in this life, but in future lives. So I think, you know, part of it's carrying on at that that DNA level, depending what body we choose again in the future, um, and what family we choose to incarnate into, and, you know, which, which loved ones will be in that new, being cast in that new play, so to speak you know, what part we're going to play and what lessons we're going to learn. Um, but I think there's, there's definitely a crossover. Wendy, you, you wrote Plymouth Plantation uh, as, a, as a prequel uh, to, to your other book. T- tell us what other plans you have for writing. What are, what are some, other, some yes. other work that you're going um, to be doing? The reason, the reason I did that was I... I just had so many experiences um, over the first five years or so that I was waking up spiritually, and I found 
um, so many different past lives and, and a few parallel lives that I needed to write it down. I mean, that was a big part of how I could try and make sense of it because there was so much happening and it was happening so quickly that I certainly, um, you know, did, did formal sessions with healers and I recorded those sessions and, and, you know, took notes on those sessions and just, again, to try and make, make sense of it all. So that's what's going to come up in the next. It's actually the Flow One Plymouth Plantation, the prequel, kicks off a trilogy. And what those four books are, it's the first five years of my spiritual awakening. So it's the years 2010 through about 2015. And in that time period, I found and worked with um, about 80 past and parallel lives. So, and there also were just so many lessons that came in of how to ground our energy. I mean, some of the other programs that we've done together, Rich, you know, how do you ground your energy? How do you clear your energy? How do you raise your vibration? How do you handle your kundalini opening? How do you um, really align with your higher self? How do you really hear um, your spirit guides and trust your spirit guides and act on that, you know, marvelous wisdom? And how do you get more in tune with your own intuition and your own guidance? Because that's a whole nother conversation. Are our guides really ourselves? You know, is our higher self really, um, you know, the one that's, that's driving the car in so many ways? And is that, are the guides just another aspect of us? Um, so that's what that's what comes out um, in the first um, in those first four books that'll that'll form the trilogy, and it gets a lot into balancing the divine masculine and the divine feminine. Um, so it will it will definitely um, you know be highlighting highlighting those areas and how we can move as as a planet, how mankind can move to. Um, what what Martha brought up um, pretty much immediately to just be more peaceful. You know, how can we tune into those five D energies of of peace and love and joy? How do we how do we end war? How do we move out of the scarcity and move into into the abundance? One of the concepts that Tilhar de Chardon used was the crassification of the earth. I think that's an appropriate term for for what you're describing. Yes. Yes, definitely. You mentioned uh, grounding and and some of the previous uh, episodes of my show that you've been on. I want to remind our listeners that many of the shows you've been on have been done into YouTube videos, uh, three or four parts, and that they can see those there on the Richard Bernardo channel. On YouTube, you can also look it up on a Google search, Wendy Rose Williams, and they will come up, including that one on grounding, which made a very good segment. And uh, tonight's show will also be done into some YouTube videos as well, and I want to encourage uh, anyone to watch those. It looks like we have a new caller. Good evening. Hi, Rich and Wendy. How you doing? Great. Well, hey, Hello, Becky. Becky. Welcome to the show. Oh, you recognize my voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I do want to apologize first of all if you hear any children. I've got three here under five, and the last one's still screaming. So I, I waited a while. Well, <laughs> no, no, no apologies needed. Um, when you have a wonderful am, household. I'm I am a blessed woman. I am so blessed, and I so want to thank you, Wendy, for all that you've done to make this happen for me. So that you you filled my life, brought my help me bring my daughter back home, and brought filled my life with such joy. And you are. So such a blessing in my life, Wendy, and in the life of, of my daughter especially. I can't even tell you how much we admire you and admire the work you do, and I'm really, really blessed to, to um, call you a friend. Well, thank you, Becky. Likewise, and I'm I'm so I'm so glad. I just I love how the the friendship circles just expand. And you introduced me to Rich, and then my um, wonderful friend Donia that helped me with this experience. 
um, with Anne Warren Little and Ghost introduced me to Martha, who's on the line with us too. And it's just it's just really neat how friends bring in the other friends. I think it is it is wonderful. And um, hearing about your experience as a ghost is just absolutely fascinating. And your book is amazing, and it's just something that I would, anyone who is listening who hasn't read it, I would certainly um, suggest they get a copy of it, even if it's just the ebook version. Um, She's a very, very talented writer, and her tales are um, not at all what you would expect, you know, which is great. I always love stuff that um, is not just the norm, and your stuff is definitely not just the norm. It definitely expands your horizons and really opens your mind to the possibilities of what is really out there, that it's just not a black and white world, but we're living in such a such a magnificent um, lifetime. And just Everything is just awesome. Does that make sense to you? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Well, thank you. You're so you're so kind, Becky. And yes, this was just I mean, this just really blew my belief system right out the door because, you know, here I am someone that didn't really even necessarily believe in ghosts and then to find out that I was having these experiences with a ghost and then it it literally was 20 years later. It was not a quick easy journey to realize that ghost was me. I mean, that just that took a journey to get to that point, um, and it took it took help from friends and and healers to be able to um, deal with that because I just didn't know what to deal with it. I went to I went to two friends who were wonderful psychics and said, "Okay, have 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 a sitch here, have a little situation," <laughs> <laughs> and I know I know you smart people know how to do something to get ghosts to go to the light. I mean, I wasn't even sure what the terms were. I was like, you know, get the ghost to go where it belongs. And both of them kind of looked at me, you know, separately. I had these two separate conversations and their jaw kind of dropped. And they both said, that's above my pay grade. I don't, I don't do that when the person is here asking me. <laughs> <laughs> for the help with the ghost, and they're also here incarnated again. Um, that was but, definitely something. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, had to say, hmm, I no can't no don't do that. I don't do that part. <laughs> and fortunately, think, one was I, able <laughs> to send me to. A I didn't think it was teacher. possible. <laughs> Correct. Went on themselves. Correct. And then, and then it was just part of solidifying the knowledge of it is possible because we only incarnate with a portion of our energy. And Donia Wiccan, um, I just so appreciate how she helped me. And she's been a guest on um, Rich's program too. And her website is thezenofben.com. And-